In today's video I'm going to make some cesium dichromate. That would be a pretty simple process if I already had um, sodium dichromate or potassium dichromate. But since I don't own any of these salts, I will have to make the chromate ions myself. And I will make them from chromium. I have these very pretty chromium crystals here. I could use these, but they were a gift for my element collection. So they're way too precious to use them. I also have this chromium disc. It's 10 grams of chromium. And as you can see, I used it in my LIPS, my laser induced breakdown spectroscopy video. Um, and these marks you can see here are the points where the laser hit the sample. This is 10 grams of chromium. And the first step is to dissolve the chromium in hydrochloric acid. You can see the chromium metal disc at the bottom of the beaker here. The purity of the chromium metal is around 99.9%, .9%, so it's pure enough for my purpose. And the first step is to add some concentrated hydrochloric acid to dissolve the metal. I forgot to film it, but at first not much happens, but after a few seconds the oxide layer of the chromium um, gets dissolved and the chromium starts reacting with the hydrochloric acid and forms hydrogen gas and chromium ions. While you watch the chromium dissolve, some words of caution. Chromium salts are toxic, especially the chromate anion. It is a potent oxidizer and causes cancer, infertility and is a contact allergen. It is highly toxic to aquatic organisms and has to be disposed of by a professional company that is specialized in the disposal of toxic compounds. Before bringing the waste to a company that can dispose of it, all of the chromate was reduced to chromium-3 ions using sodium thiosulfate. Normally I hate working with toxic chemicals in the home lab, and I'm not talking about the ones that harm you immediately, I'm talking about the ones that you have an accident with and in 20 years you wake up with a baseball sized tumor on your head or your dick suddenly falls off. But it's the only way to obtain the cesium dichromate, so I will make an exception. So the reaction is done. As you can see we've got a beautiful green colored solution. There is still some undissolved um, chromium chloride in there, so I'm going to add a little bit of distilled water so I can filter it without losing the chromium chloride in my filter. So we have now filtered our solution of chromium 3 chloride and I'm now going to add some potassium carbonate to neutralize the remaining hydrochloric acid and to form chromium hydroxide and if we look in our Merck index we can see that chromium hydroxide is practically insoluble in water, so it will form a precipitate. And the reason I'm not going to use um, sodium hydroxide is that if you add too much hydroxide, um, the precipitate will redissolve as um, hexahydroxy um, chromium. And for that reason, I'm going to use the carbonate to get a mildly basic solution. As you can see, a precipitate of chromium hydroxide has formed. And if we test for the pH, you can see that we are in the basic range. So I've tried to oxidize the chromium with um, the sodium hypochlorite. It worked, but it didn't work great. So I had a lot of um, chromium hydroxide left over. I then read a paper where they oxidized the chromium with um, hydrogen peroxide in a very basic solution and I thought I would try that. So I added some sodium hydroxide to get the pH up and then I added the hydrogen peroxide and heated the solution and as you can see we've co converted all of the chromium into chromate and now I'm going to filter the solution and then I'm going to acidify it to shift the equilibrium from the chromate to the dichromate and then I'm going to add some potassium chloride because I added the sodium hydroxide, so I have sodium ions in there. 
and I want the potassium dichromate to precipitate because the solubility of potassium dichromate in cold water is a lot lower than the solubility of the sodium dichromate. So I'm going to add some potassium ions by adding potassium chloride and then I'm going to cool it to precipitate the potassium dichromate. I reduced the volume of the solution by boiling it down. I am now going to acidify the solution with hydrochloric acid. That way I'm driving the equilibrium from the chromate towards the dichromate. In a basic solution the chromate will be the main uh, form and in a acidic solution the dichromate will be the main form. You will see a color change. It will change from yellow orange to deep orange red and you should be able to see that change when I'm adding the hydrochloric acid. I have cooled the solution to precipitate out the potassium dichromate and I'm now going to filter it to recover the potassium dichromate and get a solution of at this temperature saturated potassium dichromate. We filtered off our potassium dichromate and this is the leftover solution. The nice thing about this solution is that we know that if we cool this down to around 0 degrees Celsius we won't get any more potassium dichromate precipitate because we already cooled it to zero degrees Celsius and filtered it. So if we now add cesium ions, in my case cesium chloride, we should get a precipitate of cesium dichromate. The reason for that is that cesium dichromate is much less soluble in water than potassium dichromate. So we can add the cesium chloride in here get our precipitate, cool the solution and filter it. And this way we know that we won't have any potassium dichromate contamination in our cesium dichromate. So I'm going to add a little bit of cesium chloride and you should be able to see a precipitate forming. The solution right now is clear. I've added some cesium chloride. And as you can see, we get a precipitate of cesium dichromate. So now I'm going to cool this solution to make sure as much cesium dichromate um, precipitates and then we're going to filter it. The cesium dichromate was filtered, washed with cold distilled water and acetone before drying it. This is the final product. It's six grams of cesium dichromate. You may ask yourself why I made this toxic substance. Well, for one, I like cesium compounds, as you might have noticed watching my other videos, and it's a vacuum getter material. It is used in the production of vacuum tubes where it is mixed with zirconium and heated. In this process, the cesium dichromate gets reduced and forms elemental cesium, which reacts with any traces of oxygen present. That also means it is an alternative route to make cesium. I may try reducing the dichromate to form cesium in a future video. I want to thank my patrons for supporting me and I hope you liked the video. Thank you a lot for watching.